Nvidia stock hit a rough patch last week. Is it gonna break below 100? Is it gonna go to new all time highs? That's what I get asked every single day. But to truly understand the meteoric rise of Nvidia, we should shift our attention to earlier days. Today, I wanna take a stroll down the memory lane with you back to the 1990s to really understand this tech giant. We'll explore the cyclical nature of the tech industry and see if this fascinating story can offer us some insight into what's gonna happen next. Picture this, it's 1993, grunge music dominating the airwaves, Jurassic Park is roaring in cinemas, and in the tech world, a little known company called Intel is about to change everything with its Pentium processor. But lurking in the shadows, a scrappy startup named NVIDIA is quietly laying the groundwork for a revolution that would reshape the entire computing landscape. Over the next few minutes, we'll unravel the epic tale of how NVIDIA, against all odds, outmaneuvered the seemingly invincible Intel. We'll dive into the rise of both companies, examine NVIDIA's current dominance, and explore Intel's struggles to regain its footing. But that's not all. We'll also cast our gaze to the horizon, identifying potential contenders who might be poised to repeat this David versus Goliath story. And my faithful companion, Winston, yes, my golden retriever with an uncanny nose for market trends, has been busy sniffing out some incredible opportunities here. In fact, he's also helped us achieve over 80% gains on our teaching portfolio this year. Yeah, and if you're curious about how we managed this, I'm hosting a special beginner trading training this coming Tuesday. Grab yourself a seat. Felix Frenzedog slash webinar. It's completely free of charge and part of our mission to make a million people financially free. Right then, shall we dive back into the silicon studded annals of tech history? So let's transport ourselves back to the early 1990s. Picture a world where the personal computer is just beginning to revolutionize homes and offices across the globe. At the heart of this revolution is Intel. I remember distinctly my excitement when I purchased my first PC, I think it was about 14, and it had an Intel Pentium. In fact, that was pretty much the only thing I cared about because that was the chip of the time. Intel's ascent to dominance in the 1990s is nothing short of remarkable. It all began with the launch of the 486 processor in 1989, the first 86 chip to pack more than a million transistors. But the real game changer came in 1993, with the introduction of the Pentium processor. Now here's where Intel's brilliance truly shines. In 1991, they launched the Intel Insight marketing campaign. You might remember that if you're my age. And that wasn't just a clever advertising strategy, it was a masterstroke that transformed Intel from a faceless chip manufacturer into a household name. Suddenly consumers weren't just buying computers, they were buying machines with Intel inside. But Intel's success wasn't just about marketing. Under the leadership of Andy Grove, the companies religiously adhered to Moore's law, doubling transistor density every 18 to 24 months. And this relentless pursuit of tech advancements kept Intel leaks ahead of its competitors. The numbers tell a staggering story of growth. In 1990, Intel's revenue stood at 3.9 billion. Just five years later, it had skyrocketed to over 16 billion. And as we closed out the decade in 1999, Intel was raking in a whopping 29 billion annually. Perhaps, but perhaps the most jaw-dropping statistic is this. By the end of the 1990s, Intel controlled over 80% of the PC processor market. The only company that even dared to challenge them was AMD, and they were barely a blip on Intel's radar. Intel had become the undisputed Goliath of the semiconductor world. They were unstoppable, unassailable, and seemingly invincible. But as we know, in the world of fast-paced tech, today's giant can become tomorrow's cautionary tale. While Intel was basking in its dominance, a small company called NVIDIA was quietly laying the groundwork for a revolution. Founded in 1993, NVIDIA initially focused on developing graphics processing units, or GPUs, for gaming and professional visualization. In the shadow of Intel's empire, NVIDIA was carving out its own niche. But it wasn't until 2006 that NVIDIA made a move that would change everything. That year, they introduced 
CUDA, Compute Unified Device Architecture. Now, this might sound like a mouthful of tech nonsense, but it's nothing short of a revolution. CUDA allowed developers to use GPUs for general purpose computing. Suddenly, these specialized chips weren't just for rendering graphics anymore. They could be harnessed for complex calculations in fields like scientific simulations, financial modeling, and crucially, artificial intelligence. As we entered the 2010s, artificial intelligence and deep learning began to gain serious tractions. Researchers made a groundbreaking discovery. GPUs with the ability to perform massive parallel computations were exceptionally well suited for training and running AI models. NVIDIA's years of experience in optimizing GPUs for gaming and graphics had inadvertently prepared them for this moment. And the, the visionary leadership of CEO Jensen Huang, NVIDIA pivoted hard towards AI and data center applications. They developed specialized hardware like Tesla GPUs for data centers and DGX AI supercomputers. On the software side, they created the CUDA X AI suite, providing developers with powerful tools to leverage GPU acceleration for AI workloads. The results, nothing short of spectacular. NVIDIA's revenue skyrocketed. In 2020, they brought in 10.9 billion. By 2021, it grew to 16 billion. In 2022, surged to 27 billion. And in 2024, they shattered all expectations with almost 61 billion in revenue. With the explosive growth, Nvidia didn't just catch up to Intel, they surpassed them. The GPU maker that once lived in Intel's shadow had emerged as the new titan of the semiconductor industry. But Nvidia's rise wasn't just about being in the right place at the right time. It was about recognizing a seismic shift in computing and positioning themselves at the forefront of that change. They saw the potential of AI before most others, and they executed their vision with laser-like focus. All right, let's fast forward to today and examine Nvidia's current position in the tech landscape. It's a tale that would make Winston whack his tail with excitement. As of 2024, NVIDIA's dominance in the AI chip market is nothing short of staggering. They command an estimated 70 to 95% market share, pretty much the same thing that Intel had for the PC world in the 90s. Let that sink in for a moment. In the rapidly evolving world of AI, NVIDIA isn't just one of the players, they're basically the entire game. Their data center revenue, primarily driven by AI chips, has seen exponential growth. NVIDIA's GPUs, particularly the H100 and the newer H200, are considered the gold standard for AI training. It's not just about raw power, though. NVIDIA has built a robust software ecosystem around their hardware, including CUDA and CUDNN and Tensor RT. And these software systems make it easier for developers to leverage GPU acceleration so they can they're creating a virtuous cycle of adoption and innovation. But NVIDIA isn't content with just dominating the AI chip market. They forge strategic partnerships with leading cloud providers, AI research institutions and enterprises. Microsoft's Azure AI supercomputers, powered by NVIDIA GPUs. Amazon Web Services, they offer NVIDIA GPU instances. Major AI research labs and universities, they're all clamoring for NVIDIA's tech. The financial markets have taken notice of NVIDIA's stellar performance. In March 2024, NVIDIA's market cap exceeded 2 trillion, surpassing both Google and Amazon. Their PE ratio reflects the sky-high expectations investors now have for NVIDIA's future growth. It's worth noting that NVIDIA's success isn't just about tech, it's about vision. CEO Jensen Huang's strategic pivot towards AI and data centers has paid off handsomely. Under his leadership, NVIDIA has transformed from a company known primarily for gaming graphics cards to the driving force behind the AI revolution. However, as any seasoned investor knows, today's market leader can become tomorrow's whoops. The tech industry is fickle, and maintaining a dominant position is no easy feat. NVIDIA faces challenges both from established players and upstarts all vying for a piece of the lucrative AI chip market.
So as we look at NVIDIA's current landscape, one can't help but draw parallels to Intel's dominance in the 1990s. The questions on everyone's mind is, can NVIDIA maintain its lead or will it face the same challenges that Intel is? Now let's turn our attention back to Intel again. Once the undisputed king of chips, Intel has found itself in a position that would have been unthinkable just a decade ago. Intel's challenges began with missed opportunities. While they were busy dominating the PC and server CPU market, they failed to capitalize on two crucial shifts in the semiconductor landscape, the mobile revolution and the rise of AI. It's as if they were so focused on the existing empire that they didn't notice the ground shifting beneath their feet. But Intel's woes didn't stop there. Their traditional advantage in manufacturing has eroded in recent years. Delays in transitioning to 10 nanometers and 7 nanometers allowed competitors like TSMC and Samsung to search ahead in advanced node production. It's a bit like a marathon runner stumbling just as the finish line comes into view. The financial impact of these challenges has been severe. Let's look at some numbers. Intel's revenues declined from 19 billion in the first quarter of 2019 to 12 billion in the second quarter of 2024, a 33% drop over five years. Their gross profit margin has contracted from 58% to 35% in the same per period. Perhaps most alarmingly though, Intel has reported operating losses in seven out of the last eight quarters. It's a stark reversal of fortune that would make even Winston whimper. But Intel isn't taking this lying down. They're fighting back with a series of strategic moves. In 2021, Pat Gelsinger returned as CEO, promising to revitalize the company. Under his leadership, they've launched the IDM2 strategy, focusing on regaining manufacturing leadership and expanding foundry services. They're increasing their investments in GPU and AI accelerator development. Intel's AI strategy includes the development of a new HPC GPU for high-performance computing. They acquired Habana Labs to bolster their AI accelerator capabilities, and they launched Gaudi 2 AI processors to compete with NVIDIA. But despite these efforts, Intel faces an Apple battle. They're investing heavily in R&D, 4.2 billion just last quarter, but this is pressuring profitability in the short term. It's a classic innovator's dilemma, how to invest in the future while managing the decline of your core business. The story of Intel's challenges serves as a stark reminder of the relentless pace of innovation in the tech industry. It shows that no company, no matter how dominant, is immune to disruption. The question now is, can Intel regain its footing? Or will it be relegated to a cautionary tale in tech history? Now, as we've seen the rise of NVIDIA and the struggles of Intel's, you might be wondering who else is vying for a piece of this AI chip market? Who could be the next David to challenge NVIDIA's Goliath? Well, let's examine some of the contenders and maybe we'll find just the thing we want to invest in. First up, we have ARM, ticker symbol ARM. Now, ARM-based GPUs like Mali are primarily used in mobile devices. And they aren't currently competitive with NVIDIA's high-end GPUs for AI workloads. However, there's an interesting twist here. NVIDIA itself is developing ARM-based CPUs called Grace, which they claim will offer 10 times better performance than the classic CPU service for AI applications when paired with NVIDIA GPUs. It's a bit like NVIDIA hedging its bets. Next, let's talk about Google. Google's Tensor Processing Units, or TPUs, these are custom ASICs designed specifically for machine learning workloads. The latest TPU is reported to be incredibly powerful, with some estimates suggesting it could be faster than NVIDIA's flagship H100 GPU for certain AI tasks. TPUs are also more energy efficient than GPUs for AI workloads. However, there is a catch. TPUs are only available through Google Cloud, which limits their broader adoption currently. It's a bit of an odd move, really, on the part of Google. I think if they were really that good, I'd sell them to everybody else who'd want them, unless they can't make them quite fast enough. We'll see. Then we have Neural Processing Units, or NPUs. These specialized AI accelerators are often found in mobile devices and are very efficient for specific AI tasks like facial recognition or natural language processing. However, they're not as flexible or widely adopted as GPUs for general AI development and training. 
We also can't forget about AMD. They've been making strides in the GPU market with their RDNA and CDNA architectures. While they're still playing catch up to Nvidia, their acquisition of Xilinx has bolstered their AI capabilities. It's worth keeping an eye on AMD as they continue to innovate in this space. Lastly, we have a dark horse contender, quantum computing. While still in its infancy, quantum computers have the potential to solve certain problems exponentially faster than classic computers, including AI tasks. And companies like IBM, Google, and startups like D-Wave are making significant progress in this field. Now, it's important to note that while these technologies show promise, NVIDIA's lead in the software ecosystem, developer, mindshare, and ongoing hardware innovations make it difficult for competitors to overtake them in the near term. So we have to acknowledge it's not just about raw performance, it's about the entire ecosystem in ease of use for developers. The AI hardware landscape is evolving rapidly with companies large and small working to close the gap with NVIDIA. While NVIDIA currently holds a commanding lead, the history of tech has shown that today's leader can be tomorrow's laggard. The question is, who will make the breakthrough that reshapes the industry once again? As we've journeyed through the silicon studded landscape of the semiconductor industry from Intel's dominance in the 90s to Nvidia's current reign, one thing becomes abundantly clear. The only constant in this field is change. The story of Nvidia's rise and Intel's relative decline in the AI chip market is a classic tale of disruption. It shows us how a smaller, more agile company can recognize an emerging opportunity and pivot their entire business to capitalize on it. Meanwhile, even industry giants can struggle when faced with rapid tech shifts and internal challenges. Key factors in NVIDIA's success have been their early recognition of AI's potential, their tech leadership in GPU design, which was kind of random because it was actually just built for graphics, a strong software ecosystem, and a visionary leader. On the flip side, Intel's over-reliance on their traditional CPU market Manufacturing delays and slow response to the AI revolution have led to their current struggles. But let's not forget, the semiconductor industry remains highly dynamic. New challenges are emerging and established players are adapting. For us investors, it's crucial to stay informed about these industry shifts. They can present risks and opportunities. And I think there are probably three ways to play this. One, you could say, I can't be bothered to dig into all of it. I'm going to buy an ETF of semiconductors and SOX is probably the one that's the biggest one out there, SOX. Uh, or you could pick a winner if you believe you've got a significant technical understanding of why maybe NVIDIA or ARM is so far ahead, nobody can catch up. Um, or you can try and find the underdog the AMD or something like that and say, no, no, they're undervalued. They're going to come back and they're going to do it cheaper. And a lot of this is going to come down to energy usage. So it won't be just performance, but it'll be performance per amount of energy used because it'll become incredibly expensive to run these data centers otherwise. And the third option is to go, I don't need to invest in the latest thing. <laughs> and that's also a fair thing to do. Um, I know a lot of very successful investors who completely avoid tech because they say, keeps changing, don't understand it. I do understand Coca-Cola uh, or uh, you know, something really boring like uh, Costco, right? which is done incredibly well. So there isn't a right or a wrong here. I just want you to be aware of the risks and the shifts. And I want you to therefore commit to doing that research if you are investing in these individual stocks, because if you're not, you're gonna get woken up one day and you'll be like, whoops, what the heck happened to my favorite stock? And um, well, another way to play this, of course, is to learn a bit more about how to spot opportunities from a more technical point of view, like essentially becoming a bit of a trader. And that could be short term or long term or medium term. There are different ways of doing that. And if you want to learn how we do that, and that's why we're up 80 percent so far this year in our teaching portfolio, then come and join our free beginner trading training next week at felixfrenzelog slash webinar for about an hour and a half or so. I'll show you what we do and how we do it. We'll do some real trades together and you can ask me all the difficult questions you've always wanted to ask me. Links down below at felixfrenzelog slash webinar. And I thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video um, and it's a bit more of a bit of a more of a tale rather than sort of numbers, uh, then let me know in the comments down below and maybe share it with a friend. All the best. September looms large on Wall Street. If historical patterns hold true and the beginning of the month was an indicator of that, we could be facing a challenging month ahead. But even 